Hi, my name is Dale and welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. Today our Q&A is going to cover two videos. One is call-up blocks and the other one is small dovetails. And both of these were kind of fun little videos. Something I never talked about on the small dovetail was when I made this pin, I purposely made it very loose. And the reason I did that is it's easier to slip on and off and then of course you can tighten it. And what I've discovered in using this type of dovetail that are manufactured, they're manufactured more by machinists than anything else. And machinists, well, we tend to do things at a very, very tight tolerance. And a lot of the times you can't slip the dovetail on. So I'm just saying, don't be nervous about making this too loose a fit. Just make it to where it works well for you. A great comment also came off of that one from Kata Lafus. I'm sorry, that's a... And he asked the question, or actually he made the observation, apparently you're injured on the head and there's, there's a little scar right there. You have to be careful. We need you as God to protect you. Boy, do I need some help. What is interesting is how many times I get comments from trolls that want to say I'm doing something unsafe. Well, everything you do in life has danger with it. And you have to be careful. Well, what's funny is no troll has ever talked about the most dangerous thing a YouTuber can do in the shop. And that is to photograph what he's making for YouTube. <laughs> because it's distracting to set up a camera, have sound running, set up your lights, try to find that camera angle, and then go to work and get something done without getting hurt. I'm surprised there's not more injuries shown on YouTube. Well, what happened to me was I was setting up a couple cameras, and I've got this camera stand that's, well, let's see, it's probably about nine feet tall, and it's got four arms coming off of it, and each arm has either a camera on it or a light on it, and I can move it around the studio. It's really kind of a cool system. Well, one of those arms was just at that right height where I'm looking down, I'm walking, bam, hits me in the forehead, causes this big gash, and it's one of those gashes that, well, let's just say, well, not a lot of Christian words came out during that accident. So Tom Lipton asked this question. Hey, Dale, asked this question about the mark on the forehead. Hey, Dale, did Adam come over and smack you upside the head for the top slot? Well, he's talking about, I did a survey, and one of the questions I asked, who are the top five YouTubers? And you guys just kind of rank them yourselves. Well, Adam hit number one, and number two was Tom. So my reply to Tom was, no, Tom, he didn't hit me. He paid me off with the winnings from, his four, from the four-jaw competition where he schooled you. <laughs> Sorry, Tom, I just had to do that one. That was just uh, too easy not to go after. So uh, if you guys didn't see it, last summer there was, in L.A., was something called the Summer Bash, and it was put on by Stan at Bar Z, and he invited a bunch of YouTubers and also viewers to come to this incredible party. Well, at this party, Tom challenged Adam to set up something on a four-jaw chuck, and they had a competition to see who could do it faster. Well, Adam, of course, won, and well, what happened is people started throwing money on the table, and the winner took all, and it was fun to just throw money on the table, watch them kind of stress out over this um, competition. So it was a lot of fun. Also, somebody else mentioned on that video, I guess it's going to cover kind of three videos. I did a Q&A on the questions from that survey. <clears throat> and I didn't mean it to be a competition of who was the top five. I just meant that as information. Even though it did come out as a competition, that wasn't my goal of it. And remember, all of us YouTubers know each other. And we owe that thanks to Stan over at Bar Z and having that party. And it's been great to get to know these guys. So there is kind of a fun little rivalry between us. But remember, our goal is to grow 
the metalworking community and make it better. And that's what we're trying to do. So I hope nobody takes too much offense. It was just a lot of fun to put together the competition, which was never supposed to be a competition. So good times. Now let's get to collet blocks. So I did a thing on testing your collet blocks and some ideas of how to use it. And Ray Jones asked really a great simple question and really to the point. So he asked, no need to tap the collet block down with a soft dead blow hammer. And what he's talking about is when the collet block gets put in to the vise and you clamp it down, is it going to move or, or levitate or something? And the answer is yes. Do you have to knock it down with a hammer? Well, it matters what accuracy you're trying to get out of the part. In this situation, for what I was trying to do, it was just a representation of what is possible. And to save time, I didn't bring in the hammer to tap this down. Ham Software had a great comment. I love this one. Call it blocks weigh a lot less than a rotary table. And boy, do they ever. I think my rotary, rotary table is a 10 inch and it probably weighs in around 70, 80 pounds, something like that. And it takes quite a bit to bring it up and put on the table. This is definitely a faster and lighter way to fix, to do some of the jobs you need to do on the milling machine. Another question, there was a lot of this one is, are there collet blocks for an R8 collet? I don't know of any that are commercially made. And some of you guys mentioned that you're thinking about building one. And I think it's very, a very cool project. But remember, there's some limitations with R8 collets. And there's some benefits to an R8 collet. One of their ben big benefits is you can set it up to where you just have a threaded rod that comes in here or a bolt that pulls us in and tightens down on a part. Where on here, you have to build a ring. I think the bolt is a great quick way to tie something down. The disadvantage to the bolt is it doesn't have a through hole. So sometimes I'm working on these collet blocks and I may have a piece of steel that goes through that are several feet long. And that is the advantage of using a 5C collet. The difference, the other challenge with an R8 collet is you're limited in sizes. A general set of R8 collets only covers about 13 sizes and there's, you know, it's 16th, 8th, 3 16 et cetera. And that's sometimes just not enough sizes to really clamp down, but that's something you have to determine. Are you going to be putting long stock in it, and are you going to be putting odd sizes in it? And for me, the answer is yes on both those counts. I have a full set of these collets. I should say full sets, um, a loose term. I've got a set of collets that starts from, I think, a sixteenth, goes all the way up to inch and a half or inch and an eighth, and does it in 64th increments. So the set is about 60-some collets. But the advantage to a C5 collet is there's more size available. Now, there are R8 collets that are available in other sizes and smaller sizes, but they're very rare and very hard to find. So that's just something to think about if you start putting in time on building an R8 collet system. So I don't want to discourage you guys about building an R8 collet system. I just want you to know the strengths and the weaknesses of it. Now here's been an interesting thing. So on the video where I did the small dovetail, I did a bunch of filing work that took about five minutes. And instead of what, making you guys watch the whole thing and take five minutes, I sped it up. Mike L. Double asked this question or made a comment. The sped up video section are great. The music, on the other hand, seems a little loud. I can't speak for everybody, but I'd rather like the sound of the machines in motion even sped up. Well, it's interesting, Michael. I agree with you. I love to hear the machines, but when I look at 
my analytics and watch how people watch my videos. And I watch that very closely because I want to make sure that I'm putting stuff in the video that you guys really like and appreciate. So when I add the music, I add it because when I s turn a machine on and if I run the machine at normal speed, you guys will actually fast forward through it. So I decided I would just fast forward through the video for you of that section well, you guys are still fast forwarding through it. So what I did is I added music and now you guys actually watch the whole fast forward through. So again, what I'm trying to do is make an interesting video for everybody possible. And I really appreciate your comment. And that's actually why I read your comment because it's valid for me to understand what you guys are thinking. But I also look at my analytics and I have to bring both those pieces of information together to try to create better videos for you guys that you want to watch more. Well, now for you guys wanting to know who's going to be the YouTuber of the week. This week it is Tinkerer John. Tinkerer John has about 10,000 subscribers and he's been making videos for about eight years. He also has a website so you can get in touch with him really easy and also search stuff that he's been talking about on his channel. Now his channel has basically three different sections to it. One is ham radio operating, wood turning which is specializes more in like the small um, office pins, love those things. And then, of course, machining, which we're all interested in. And he's got a great little machine shop. He's got a, a Lathe Master 930 and also a mill drill. And that's really a great machine, especially for the home hobbyist that wants to get into milling. Well, that little drill mill will do some great things, and he really pushes it to its limits. His video style is about 10% FaceTime and then about 90% talking hands. Now if you don't know what I mean by talking hands, think of Mr. Pete, close up hands, doing something as he talks. That's talking hands. So Tinker and John is about 10% face and about 90% talking hands. And his videos last in the range of around 10 to 15 minutes. Really, really a great length. And his videos are his metalworking videos are project videos and also talking about making machines and tooling. He's got this one project right now he's working on. It's a Stuart 10V steam engine. Right now it's up to 54 parts. So what that means is he really takes the time and goes through the details of making this V10 engine, or actually it's not a V10 engine, the Stuart steam engine, which is a model 10 V, and I really appreciate that kind of detail, so there's no questions asked. When he shows you how to do it, he shows you in great detail. So I want you to go check out Tinker John. I think you'll really like his channel. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give me some thumbs up if you did. Also, give me some of your comments. I'd love to hear from you. I do read them all. I try to reply when I get time, so excuse me if I don't get back to you fast, but I do try to get back to you. All right, till next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks.